Okay. Um, well, I guess I will begin then. And I'd like to welcome everybody here this afternoon. I was going to say it's nice to see all of you, but I can't, I can't <laughs> see anybody. So, so um, I did recognize a few of the names that registered for the session. So it's nice to know that you're out there. And um, I look forward to meeting the uh, rest of the people who have registered, hopefully sometime in the near future. Uh, my name's Brenda Mellon, and I'm the Manager of Marketing and Continuing Studies at Cumberland College. And um, work. And in my area, we look after offering the university programming at Cumberland. And um, I would like to take the time to recognize the other Cumberland College staff who are here with us today. So we have uh, Trudy Webster, who's our Recruitment and Development Coordinator. Get a little wave. Ashlyn Weisberg is the University Programmer. Lynette Bersky works in University and uh, Marketing and Continuing Studies. Hi. And then we have our advising staff. We have Brandy Wicks from Tisdale. Lindsay Moskill from Malfort and Brandy True from Nippon. Hi. And out there, we also have Jeff Fisher, I believe, and he's our technical program manager. So Jeff wants to give a shout out. Maybe he's not. No. And I, oh, he, is, he is there. Awesome. And uh, I believe Brooke Bolin, one of our university students, is also joining us today. If Brooke hi. wants to say hi to everyone. Uh, we're so thankful that Brooke is able to join us. Uh, she just finished her first year of university studies with us at Cumberland College. Uh, it certainly wasn't the end to the year that we were hoping for or expecting. Um, I was... I was kind of hoping that we would have a year-end wind-up or, or party to celebrate, but uh, I hope that the semester ended well for you, Brooke, and we're really glad that you were able to join us today. So um, before we begin, I'll just briefly touch upon the agenda and um, what we'll be covering this afternoon. Trudy's going to share some information with you in a PowerPoint presentation about our university programs. With Ashton's going to join in and talk uh, a little bit about the course selections and schedule. We're going to uh, get Brooke's feedback and um, she'll share a little bit about her experience as a university student at Cumberland. And uh, then Lindsay's going to discuss uh, registering for classes, how you do that, and provide some information on financing your education as well. And then Brandy is going to talk about the learner support services that are available for students at Cumberland College. Um, Trudy's also going to be talking about scholarships, I believe, so people who may be interested in that as well. We, uh, we would like this session to be fairly informal, so please feel free if you have a question throughout. Don't feel that you have to wait to the end to ask a question. Um, we do ask that everyone mute themselves, though, during, um, during the session or when they aren't speaking, just to avoid uh, background noise. But uh, please feel free to unmute and ask when, whenever. There will also be an opportunity at the end um, for some questions, and we also want a little wrap-up with a few fun, fun questions for you. Um, but before we start, I wanted to acknowledge that... Um, Today we will be sharing our program plans that uh, we've been planning for a long time. There are status quo plans for the fall. So they include um, our face-to-face -face programs and um, everything that we've been planning on for the, for the last year. Now that being said, um, we will follow provincial and federal, federal requirements um, and uh, recommendations of the Minister of Health if there are any changes that are required given the COVID situation. So at, at this point in time, we haven't been notified of any changes and um, we do expect to hear more information later this month. So when 
we find out more information, we'll make sure that we pass it on to everybody here who's participated and uh, we'll be sharing the information um, as widely as possible. So, so with that, um, I hope that you um, get some useful information today and I'm going to turn it over to Trudy. Okay, thanks, Brenda. Okay, welcome everybody. It would be nice to see you, but I can't. So <laughs> I know you're out there. Um, so I'm Trudy. I am the Recruitment and Development Coordinator for Cumberland College. And what I'm going to do this afternoon is I'm going to lead you through the PowerPoint presentation that I would normally be delivering in classrooms and at career fairs, but we're not able to do that. So this is the next best thing. All right. So we're going to start out by what we're hoping that you're going to do. You're going to start your university at Cumberland College. We have campuses around the region. We've got three. We have one in Melfort, one in Nippon, and one in Tisdale. And when we talk about our university programming, we're pretty proud to be able to offer both University of Saskatchewan and University of Regina programming. When we talk about our classes, we want you to know that our classes are accredited. They are the real meal deal. They're right from the University of Saskatchewan or from the University of Regina. Uh, we deliver them in a few different ways, face-to-face. Uh, -face. Uh, sometimes we can incorporate some video conferencing. We do live streams. And of course, there's some online options as well. Our classes are nice and small. And right now you might wonder what's the big deal about that. But by the time I'm done my presentation, I think you'll understand the importance of small class sizes. And a really great point is our classes are taught by awesome instructors. And I'm not just saying that, I know they are. We have lots of university students that come back to us and tell us how wonderful their experience was due to the quality of the instructors that we have. Um, when you come to Cumberland College, you can begin your first year of studies uh, towards a variety of degrees, uh, anything in arts and science. Uh, one we like to point out is agriculture and bioresources through the U of S, in education and in business. And those are just some examples. Um, as you can see, as a rule of thumb, if your program of choice is a direct entry program, you can most likely get that first year with us right here at Cumberland College. Besides starting your degree, you can actually complete some entire degrees at Cumberland College. And some examples of that is the U of R Social Work Program. You can do the full four years right here at Cumberland College. There's also a selection of arts and science degrees depending on your program. Um, some examples that are a Bachelor of Arts in English or a Bachelor of Arts in Sociology. Uh, in select years, um, you can do your U of R elementary education program. We are right now just wrapping up year three of our second four-year cohort program. The first one we ran was in Nippon. The one that we currently have running is in Melfort. And it's been a fantastic opportunity for the students engaged in that training. They're able to get their entire degree uh, right, right here at Cumberland College. So that is an amazing opportunity and something we're very proud to be offering. Um, I think we're not 100% sure, you know, what the future holds in terms of whether we will be doing another one, but I know we're, we're hopeful that we'll be able to do that again. If you need to complete a pre-professional year, you're going into a program where you have to have that at least one year of university studies, you know, under your belt before you can be accepted into um, your course, we can do that for you. We have all the classes that you need to get that pre-professional year. And some of the colleges that require that are law, nursing, pharmacy and nutrition, pretty much anything in the health sciences line. So you have an opportunity to get that right here. Uh, smaller class sizes and having access to all those student supports that we have to offer that we're gonna talk about a little later, but all those things together really do help you to keep that average up. Often students find that by taking their, uh, that first year uh, close to home, small class sizes in a really supportive environment, they're gonna have that competitive edge. Your classes, your marks are gonna be higher. 
Um, you have the ability to just focus more on your studies and not all those other things that sometimes you know, go along with having to move away from home and doing all your own shopping and cooking and cleaning and transportation back and forth to campus. Everything's all nice and, and streamlined. Um, so it helps to keep those marks up. Um, something that we're very proud of is we offer a selection of 12 U of S classes face to face at our Melfort campus. And this is our list uh, that we have coming up. Um, so I'm not going to talk too much about it because I think Ashlyn will talk a little bit more. Ashlyn, do you want to talk about it now or at the end? Um, I can talk about it now if okay. that works. I can kind of sure. add a little bit more detail. Um, okay, so before I start here, I just sent in the group chat here to everyone just a link to our university schedule for our 2020 to 21 year, um, just to have access to it throughout the presentation if you like. Uh, if you can't see it in the chat, it's located on our website, cumberlandcollege.sk.ca, under our university tab. Um, so my name's Ashlyn. Um, I'm the university coordinator here at Cumberland in Melfort and a big part of my job is course selection and schedule building. So when selecting our university courses, we aim to make sure that our classes that we're choosing are building blocks for a variety of different degree options. So basically the courses that we select are transferable amongst various programs. So basically, if, if you plan on pursuing a degree in geophysics, you're still going to need some humanities credits, which can be done through English 113 or English 114. And on the other hand, if you want to do a degree in linguistics or history, you'll still need some science credits, which we have bio uh, 120 and chem 112. And on top of that, you can also venture outside of the College of Arts and Science entirely, and these credits can still transfer. Um, and we also do offer Psychology 233, as you can see here on our PowerPoint, which is a stats course, which is transferable to the pre-nursing program at the U of S. Um, so like Trudy said, we offer a variety of face-to-face -face courses from the University of Saskatchewan, as you can see here. Um, and what that means basically is that our courses are physically delivered in person at our Melfort campus and then video conference to our Nipawin and Tisdale locations. And the benefits of these courses are that they're smaller class sizes, as we said, and you also have direct access to your classmates and your instructors. Um, and then if you want to change the slide there, Trudy, please and thank you. Um, in addition to our face-to-face -face classes, we also offer a variety of live stream courses from the University of Regina. So what that means is that you will still physically attend class, whether in Melfort, Nipawin, or Tisdale, and engage in live stream lectures. So the difference here between a live stream course and a typical online distance course is that the face-to-face the -face component with your classmates is still there and you still have uh, structured lecture times and you also have direct contact with your instructors during lectures through the live stream platform. And another thing that's just important to note is that many of our U of S and U of R courses are transferable between institutions. So basically you can uh, create your schedule and you can take a combination of U of S and U of R courses, depending on your degree plans. Um, for this route, it's especially important to make sure to make an appointment with one of our Cumberland advisors, just to make sure that the course selections that you've chosen uh, will work for your future plans and just to make sure everything's in place there. Um, but I just mentioned that just to make sure that students know that you're not restricted to just U of S courses or just U of R courses, but you can, there's some uh, wiggle room there depending on your specific situation and your needs there. Um, so I don't know if you're looking at our schedule right now, <laughs> but some benefits of our schedule is just that 
the majority of our classes uh, don't start until noon or so. Um, we only have two that begin at 9 a.m. And that's uh, usually a benefit for a lot of our university students. <laughs> and um, we also make sure to build our schedule um, to have our labs for chemistry and biology back to back on the same day in order to simplify students' lives as much as we possibly can. And we also work to balance our days between humanities or social sciences and science courses. So this way you're able to take English and nutrition on the same day or math and sociology on the same day rather than having nutrition, biology, chemistry, or women's and gender studies, sociology, psychology all on the same day, which you don't always get that flexibility um, on campus. So those are some of the benefits just to the way that we formulate our schedule. Um, and if you have any questions for me, feel free, but that's kind of about it for what I have to say. So thanks for listening. <laughs> and I think that uh, we're either passing it back to Trudy here or uh, to Lindsay. So, but I'll let you thanks, go. Ashlyn. Thanks. Okay, I'll move on to the, the next slide. Is there, it's again relating to what Ashlyn just said. Um, in addition to the 12 face-to-face -face options that we have, um, and then the live streaming, you can also bump up your choices by taking some online courses. And Ashlyn had mentioned that you can do a little bit of a mix of U and R and U, U of R and U of S. So combined between those two institutions, you've got the choice of about a hundred different online classes. So that's a heck of a lot of variety. So it, it's, they're kind of nice to build some flexibility into your schedule. If you're trying to maintain, let's say a part-time job and you, uh, one of the classes that you would like to take is featured at a time that just doesn't work for you, maybe we can find you an online option for that one particular class that you need. Um, it allows you to complete electives that are specific to your field of study. Um, so it's just another way of helping you get that full first year. And it also allows you a chance to explore some new and interesting subjects. There's such a wide variety at the university level, subjects that you've never been exposed to in high school. So lots of awesome opportunities. Now I'm gonna talk about the benefits of Bloom College. There's a nice group of our smiling students. Okay, uh, when you go on campus, some of the classes, like honestly, are huge. Uh, you go to those big lecture halls and they, they could have two to 300 students in them. And that, that is an unreal experience. I know for, for me, I mean, it was way back in the dinosaur ages when I went to university, but I graduated from a small group of about 30 students, went off to the U of S, and when I took my first chemistry class in the great big lecture hall in the Thorvaldson building, I, that was just a surreal experience to walk in there. I mean, um, there truly was over 200 people in that class. And you go take a seat, you don't know the person beside you, behind you, in front of you. Um, it's just very impersonal type feeling. Um, the professors, they do a fine job of, of getting their lecture information out to you, but it's still somewhat impersonal. So at Cumberland College, you're not gonna be one of those little fish in the sea. Um, our largest university class would be just over 30 students. And I believe this is a picture of the uh, U of R Bachelors of Education cohort students. So nice group, nice size. You get to know each other. You're there for a support network. Um, you get to know your instructors. They take a vested interest in you. They have an opportunity to get to know the students so much better in that small group setting. Okay, another advantage to attending Cumberland College is you can save some money. Uh, now, tuition is tuition, but you can save money by continuing to live in or close to your home community, somewhere within the region. Um, so you don't have to worry about moving into the city and signing a lease and uh, setting up an apartment, everything that takes to get that all furnished and set up. You can just stay right at home or close to home. I uh, don't have to worry about those parking fees or hassles. Um, I know when my kids were in university trying to get to campus sometimes could be a real issue. Taking public transportation was great, it was easy, it was economical, but it added a lot of time to your day. So then if you tried to drive there, 
uh, parking was a real problem. Hard to find, um, difficult, expensive. So Cumberland College saves all that grief. Um, so even if you do have to move out on your own, let's say you're a student from Porcupine Plain and you're going to be taking um, classes in, in Melfort, that's a bit of a hike, especially in the winter time. Um, you can probably find a place to rent in Melfort that's way less cost to you than if you did have to make that move to the city. So you, there's lots of opportunities to save money. Um, another benefit, this one is one that's near and dear to my heart because I'm also the person that uh, does a lot of work with our scholarships and awards programs. And Cumberland College has been very fortunate. We've got wonderful generosity shown to us by a lot of local businesses, service clubs. We've got a few foundations on board and a few trusts and they support our scholarship and awards program. So students that are coming into Cumberland College for the first time to start their post-secondary training um, are able to apply for an entrance scholarship. And our entrance scholarships, we award up to 20. Um, they're donor supported or don donor sponsored. So um, it kind of depends on how successful our fundraising is to determine exactly how many we will, but we try to keep it right around 20 every year. Uh, these scholarships are $2,000 and they are available whether you're starting um, university or technical programs. So any post-secondary full-time training at Cumberland College, coming in for the first time, you can apply for an entrance scholarship. We also award up to five Alex Pritula University entrance scholarships and these are scholarships supported by a specific foundation and they are designated specifically to students of Indigenous background who are starting their first year of university at Cumberland College. So, you know, two opportunities there. So our applications are uh, completed online. You go to our website, there's a nice link there. Now, unfortunately, our Alex Pritula Entrance Award deadline is closed, and that's a deadline that we don't have a lot of control over. Uh, the foundation that supports those kind of governs a, a lot of different criteria for that. So those ones are closed. However, uh, we normally have our entrance scholarship um, application window opens to April 30th. It closes and that's it. But this year we've got slightly different circumstances out and about. So we've decided to extend that to May the 31st. So if you're a student out there right now contemplating coming to Cumberland College and you have not applied for an entrance scholarship, the good news is you are not too late. Um, we've extended that deadline, so please hop over to our website when we're done here and fill out that application. And one question I often get asked by students is, well, what if I'm still sitting on the fence? I'm not really 100% sure if I'm going to come to Cumberland. I always say, please apply, because at least then your name is in the hat. If you're chosen for a scholarship and you come through our doors in the fall, you will receive that scholarship. If for whatever reasons you do have a change of heart and you don't come to Cumberland College, you, all you have to do then is decline your scholarship. At least you, you had that chance and it's better to have that chance than not. So even if you're still sitting on the fence, I encourage you to apply for a scholarship. Now, in addition to those entrance scholarships, we're really proud about this. We also have a second scholarship program. It's our general awards and this happens once you are a student at Cumberland College and you're chugging away in your classes come that, that fall time um, or December 1st usually we open up this and again it's another online application process uh, through our website and we have another whole awards program here. Now unlike entrance scholarships that are more based on your marks these ones have a wider variety of criteria for instance, there might be a community service group that sponsors an award and one of the criteria they set is they'd like us to give it to a student who has got some demonstrated community service. We've got a whole selection of awards where the donors have said we want it to go to a student who's experiencing some financial need. Some we've got their geographic location. Uh, for example, we've got um, two awards uh, related to Canistino. We've got one from the town of Canistino and one from the RM of Canistino and those are going to go to Canistino students. Um, we have a couple that are based on instructor nominations, all kinds of different criteria. So we want you to, once you're, you know, come to school here, take advantage of all of these different opportunities you have to apply for scholarships and awards. 
So like I said, once you're here going to school, that usually opens around December 1st and closes on January 31st, 31st of each year. Okay, this is a picture of um, the recipients of the entrance awards and or entrance scholarships and entrance award for the 2019-2020 academic year. And we had that ceremony just before the COVID-19 hit. So we had all those smiling faces there. All Everybody in that picture was a recipient of an award. Some of them received two awards. So just uh, a lot of happiness there. Okay, so if you're coming to Cumberland, a lot of times people say, yeah, but is it the same? Like, is it the same as going to university on campus? And we like to say, yes, in fact, it's even better. Um, university students are first and foremost, either a U of S or a U of R student, exactly like your peers attending on campus. You, you're applying to the university of your choice, being accepted by that university, and the only difference is you're taking your classes at our campus, at Cumberland College. Uh, all of your face-to-face -face university classes are taught by instructors who are hired by the university, so you've got that quality assurance right there. Um, it's exactly the same. It, it's an absolute excellent option for your post-secondary education. The only difference is it's taught nice and close to home. Um, when you come to uh, our classes, you get easy access to a lot of different learner supports. Uh, we can arrange some tutoring for you if you're just needing that, just that one little push to help in some areas, we can get tutors individualized program and career counseling from our advisors, uh, any little supports and services that you need, always check with them and see what's available. You just never know. We might be able to help things that you don't even think we could help you with. Um, university students um, have access to some essay writing workshops. We have a U of, uh, U of S professor that comes out and leads those. Um, little things like if you're, you need some study skills, some time management, anything like that. Um, always check with our advisors and see what, what we have. We might be able to help you, like I said, in ways that you're not even, you know, you didn't even think of asking. So always check with us first. Um, and it's not all work. We like to have some um, that, that just makes learning better. So we have a variety of events each year. We have a university orientation and welcome barbecue to kind of kick things off. Um, we have Christmas parties, field trips, cultural events. Um, we, we try to add in as much as we can just to add that social aspect to coming to school with us. So just a quick recap about um, the top reasons to choose Cumberland College. Of course, those small class sizes, um, it really makes a difference um, when you're not lost in that sea of 200 students. You can save money by residing close to your, close or in your home community. You can apply to our generous scholarship program and we've got that easy access to a variety of academic and learner supports and services. And we have an advisor on each campus. They're, they're there at the ready. Um, you don't have to make an appointment and walk half a mile across campus to go and see your professor or advisor. They're, they're right there, nice and handy and waiting to see you. And this is our advisor. There we are. We have Lindsay uh, in Melfort, Brandy in Nippon, we've got the double Brandies, we've got Brandy in Tisdale. So they're, our, they're just willing and able to help you and just a phone call or an email away. And they're all here on this call as well. So if you have questions for them now or at the end, um, they're the gals with the answers. Okay, so that's the, it for the recruitment presentation, the PowerPoint. If you've got any questions you want to ask now, um, go ahead. I guess, I guess next we'll ask uh, Brooke to uh, share a little bit about her experience with us. Um, Brooke, if you could just uh, share with everyone on this call, I guess a little bit about um, your year and I, I guess just what, what you would tell a friend about um, your time at Cumberland College. Okay, sure. Um, well, I could talk all day about uh, Cumberland, but I'll keep it short. Um, the staff at Cumberland are amazing. Um, they are helpful with everything, every question I asked. I made an appointment with the academic advisor and um, she helped me register for classes and what classes I needed. 
They're always there to help you. Um, with going for Cumberland, I'm able to stay home for a year and save on money. Um, and I can, and I continue to work part-time during my university year. And classes are only like three hours a day. So you literally go for three hours, then you have the rest of the day to do whatever you want. It's pretty sweet. Um, the profs, they're amazing. Um, I had a midterm one stormy night and my parents didn't want me to drive in. And so I emailed my prof and she was like, oh yeah, you can just do it tomorrow. I'll leave it at the front desk with the lady at Cumberland. So like, they're very nice. They are very, very helpful. Um, profs come early to class. They stay late if you have any questions or anything. Um, uh, my favorite one is like the Cumberland staff. They greet you every day when you walk in. And like when you go to the U of S, the first person that sees you isn't going to be like, oh, hi, Brooke, how was your weekend? But the staff at Cumberland are, and I just feel like that's really like very great. I don't know. I just really like that. I really like that. Um, the Cumberland staff put on like potlucks and events that we can go to um, outside of class. So that's cool. Um, Cumberland have, they have, I like the entrance scholarship. So on top of getting a scholarship from the U of S, or from somewhere else, I also get a scholarship from if you um, apply from Cumberland. And that's amazing because university is not cheap. So apply for every scholarship you possibly can. Um, yeah, Cumberland was, I'm, I was very happy that I chose to go to Cumberland for my first year. It made the first ease into my first year of university way better than I've ever expected. Um, I've made close friends with people from like Canistano and Tisdale and Nippon. And then some more Milford people stayed so then I could build up my friendships with them. It was just amazing. Very great experience. Uh, thanks for sharing that, Brooke. Uh, I think there's lots of good advice for the other uh, potential students listening. And I think um, you've just warmed our, our hearts, those of us from the college, just to hear that. It's, uh, it's, it's nice, to, nice to hear that was your experience. So thanks for joining I'm going to miss you guys. <laughs> yeah, like I said, with the abrupt end, it was kind of rough. We didn't get to do the usual uh, farewells at the end of the year. So yeah. it's nice to, nice to see you today. Okay, um, next I guess we will go to Lindsay, one of our advisors. Um, she's from our Melford campus, and she is going to share some information regarding registering for classes, um, as well as financing your education. Hi guys, I hope you can hear me. <laughs> um, so for financing your education, um, we talk lots about the scholarship opportunities and I'm glad to hear that it's been extended till May 31st. Um, so make sure to apply for that. You are also eligible for your um, university scholarship straight from the U of R of U of S. Um, so I didn't prepare um, the links for that, but I can share them at the end um, so I'm sure to apply for those as well. Um, different students choose different ways to finance their education. Some have RESPs or savings or plan to work and pay for their education. Um, others apply for student loans so that's available on the Government of Saskatchewan website and I will share that link with you now. Um, you'll have to create a portal um, to access that and generally the applications open on June 1st. Um, I strongly encourage all students to apply whether you're funding your education on your own or not. Um, and the reason for that is that there are non-repayable grant portions that um, students qualify for. So even if you're not, you even if you're not planning to get a loan, you can qualify for the grants that you wouldn't have to repay. Um, so I strongly encourage students to do that and I'll share the link to the portal now. Um, I'm not sure what else I can share with you on that. Um, for as far as registering for classes, um, you do that on your un respective university website. So that would be the U of R, U of S. Um, I think I'm not sure if I can share my screen over top of Trudy's. I'm just going to see if I can. 
no, I can't, sorry. Um, so for the U of R, you would go to the U of R uh, website, which is uregina.ca and go to the UR cell service and log in with your student number and um, password and you would go to your student account and register for classes and there you can search for classes. Um, the important part of that is to ensure that you're pre selecting the Melfort section. Um, so you would look at the location and, and select Melfort. If you need help registering for classes, certainly make an appointment with your advisors. We are meeting um, by email, phone, video, such as this to help students get registered for classes. U of R is open right now. For the U of S, you would register through your pause account and go to the registration channel and then uh, pick your add drop classes and you could search there as well. Um, registration for the U of S fall isn't open, but it is for spring summer, um, although spring classes have already started. Um, Again, if you need help doing that, you would, could contact one of us. Um, we did speak earlier about being able to take classes from either university and transfer them to the other. Um, we do that on what's called a common visiting student form. So it doesn't mean you need to apply to the other university or submit transcripts or anything. You can fill out this form and as an advisor, we can help you. Um, and you would get approval for it to transfer to the other university ahead of time. The one thing to remember is generally speaking, you need a 60% um, in that course for it to transfer to, to your program. Um, if you need help doing those again, we're available to help. And um, it's a fairly easy process. It does need a little bit of lead time to send to your university for approval and then to return it to the other university to get you registered. Um, I think that I've covered everything and I don't know if any of the other advisors could step up if I missed something. <laughs> Thanks, Lindsay. Um, we are very fortunate to have excellent advisors. So certainly encourage students to reach out to their local advisor if they have questions or need help with, with anything. Um, the other thing to mention is that if you haven't applied to university yet, there's still time to do that. So if you um, need assistance with applying or registering for classes, you could contact um, one of the advisors and they, I know they'd gladly help you out as well. Um, yes, I, sorry, I have seen that some of the deadlines have been extended to June 1st for some of those direct entry um, programs at the U of S. So there still might be, might be time for some of those programs as well. So next we'll ask uh, Brandy Wicks and she's going to uh, share some information about learner services and the types of supports that are available for students. Sure, thanks Brenda. Um, Trudy, if we could just go back a slide. So um, we have all of our numbers up there while I'm talking. Lindsay and I will just keep telling people to call us so they can see our numbers at least. <laughs> um, so so we help we provide supports in a number of areas at the college um there is an advisor on each campus and um we're pretty much there all the time um we help um i'll touch on a few things that trudy and lindsay have both said so we help in the area of academics so we'll start as early sometimes as meeting people in high school or before you start university and talking which program you might want to take part in we can help you fill out an application if you need help we'll help you uh, choose classes, pick out classes, we'll help you register for classes, we can help you ordering books, kind of all of those areas of academics preparing to come into the program. Once you're in the program, we are here to help if you're, if you're struggling and you need a tutor like uh, Trudy had mentioned, or if you um, need support in any way academically, we're your support person, we work as student advocates, we're here to to support you in any way you need academically. We also help um, with financial services. So Lindsay was talking about student loans and, and um, you might need help with talking to your funding agent or um, applying for scholarships. We will help you in all of those areas. Um, we help with, uh, if you're having personal issues. So if you're just having a bad day and you need someone to talk to, or if you're struggling and you need referrals to outside community supports, we help in, in those areas. And then we also help with career support. So if, if you have, um, we can put you in the right direction if you need help with a resume or 
or anything if you're looking for um, for work outside of or after school or um, upon completion of your first year, we help in all of those areas. So, so we, we basically will help you in any aspect that your instructors are not able to, because we do lots of support. And, um, and yes, we're not in the office right now, obviously, but we do, um, we're all working from home and uh, Trudy has all of our phone numbers up there. And if you leave here today and um, you didn't write down one of our numbers and you wanted to call someone, you can call into the college main numbers that are in the phone book and they will give you our, our cell numbers. So, and then we're still, we're checking our email, everything like that. So there's still lots of ways to get a hold of us. And like Lindsay said, if you, if you need support while we're still working from home, we can talk to you over the phone, we can do email, we can set up Zoom appointments, whatever you need, we're here, still here to support you. Thanks. Great, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that, Brandy. Um, that's that's the bit of advice that we have for new students is just to reach out um, because there there is so much available for you um, as far as supports um, even even things like accessing the writing supports or other tutorial services or i know we've had students a number of students who've uh, accessed disability support services so um, just let us know as soon as possible um, so that we can help you with a plan those cases. So uh, next we're just going to open it up to uh, questions that people may have and uh, this is our first time holding holding uh, this information session by uh, Zoom or virtually and uh, typically we see everybody face to face but now we figured out how we could see the participants so please uh, feel free to uh, ask if you have any any questions we're just going to open it up right now. or comments, it can be absolutely anything. Okay, while people may be thinking of things they want to ask or, or say, we do have a few little goodies to give away. We uh, typically would do this face-to-face, -face, so we thought we would continue the tradition um, virtually. We do have a slide next. Um, with a phone number on it. So if you're one of the one of the winners of the quizzes, we'll, we'll mail you a little goodie um, out as a prize. So the first question we have for you is, um, Cumberland College has three campus locations. Please name those for us. Is anyone gonna answer? <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, we can, Kelsey. <laughs> um, you're in Melford, Nipwin, and Tisdale. You are the recipient of the first <laughs> prize. Congratulations. So, so if you just text your mailing address to that number, we will get uh, a little goodie out to you in the mail. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Okay, my next question is, uh, Cumberland College offers classes from which universities? Hello? Hi there. Hi. Uh, U of S and U of R. You got it. So you too are the recipient of some kind of uh, Cumberland College swag that'll be coming your way shortly. Great, thank you. Uh, the next question we have is uh, name a, a university degree that you can start at Cumberland College. Any thoughts on that one? It can be absolutely any degree. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just share a few of those, those with you. Um, arts and science, of course, there's education, um, social work, 
a number of the free professional colleges, um, such as nursing, for example. So there's lots of different options that are available for students. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna open it up one last time in case people have any questions additional questions for us before we wrap up our session. Um, I, is somebody talking? Okay. Yeah. Kelsey? Um, do you know when the uh, registration date for the U of S opens for classes? Typically it's June 1st. Okay around there but this year things are a little bit different so right. um the our courses um we haven't heard anyways the course codes for our courses yet from the university and typically we have that information by now so i'm anticipating that it might be a little bit later than normal but um we'll let students know as soon as we find out okay Online courses are up on the U of S to view for um, winter and fall. But our face-to-face -face classes, um, are any of the ones that are offered directly from the Dark aren't on there yet. No, they're not. But if you're interested in any online offerings, they are there to look at to know when they know what's available anyway. Any other questions? Well, well, with that, um, I guess I'd, I'd like to extend a big thank you for attending the session with us today. Um, hope that you learned a little bit about us and who we are and what's available at Cumberland College. And uh, again, I guess we want to leave you with the message that uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to, to anyone at Cumberland College that you met here today. Um, that's what we're here for is we're here to help students and we want you to be as successful as possible. So um, with that, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. Okay, see you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.